Welcome to the Atlas House of Glass, the future of domestic life. Okay, Emmett, let's get you out of here. Emmett! Emmett, don't listen to him. He he's crazy. I'm still not sure about this business proposal, Mr. Sagan. Let me explain it again. Atlas Glass. Unbreakable and soundproof. Soundproof glass. Great. Our living space can be configured to meet the needs of any family. Need a private study? Simply slide the walls in, or slide them out again to create a spacious banquet hall. Emmett? Where'd you take him now, Doc? Next up on our roster, a man who saw the possibilities in Pond Scum. Welcome, Ernest Philpot! Thanks, Trixie. Uh, Techie. I'm truly honored to be here today among all you pointy headed great people. Like the lady said, I labor in the field of Pond Scum. LG, ladies and gentlemen is a mysterious and little-known biological entity. Through diligence... I don't even like algae cakes, but free samples are free samples. I have unlocked the secrets of this noble vegetable, and I am here to present my discoveries to a disbelieving world. Excuse me, sir. I'm looking for a tall, thin, older gentleman. He might have been with a tall, thin, younger gentleman. I know just who you're talking about. Hey, Joe Slay, about a minute ago. If you hurry, you might catch that. I know you're in there, Doc. Doc? Yes, I am a doctor of marine biology, but I fail to understand what you're... Quit fooling around, Doc. What have you done with them? Stop! Emmett? Help! I'm being attacked! Michael! What are you doing? You can't assault the exhibitors! You don't understand. He's kidnapped Emmett. The boy's obviously, uh, confused. I'll say he is. 
You want I should toss him out on his ear? That won't be necessary. Do you know who that is? That's Jacques Duteau of the Oceanic Institute. No, it's not. It's... Please keep it down. The expo went through a lot of trouble and expense to secure Professor Duteau. We can't afford to antagonize him. But... If you've got a complaint against him, we can straighten it out after the show. But if you make another scene like that, I'm afraid I'm going to have you expelled from the hall. Where did you stash Emmett? In the diving bell? It's called a bathosphere. Aha! So Emmett is in the bathosphere. I don't know what you're talking about. You're not gonna get away with this, you know. As they say in my country, que sera, sera. Mm. Thank you, Ernest. Do be sure to drop by his booth and sample an algae cake. I have, and it was very... Interesting. Huh. I will be back later to highlight another of our fine exhibitors. See you soon! Hey, Jacques. Why don't you tell me who you really are? Pardon. Sifu's plate. I do not accept flowers from strangers. Okay. Call me a snoop. Welcome to the world of tomorrow, where a man's home is truly his castle. Here, gratification is just always a push of a button away. In the house of the future, phone conversations will be completed in the privacy of the personal phone helmet. Please recite the phone number you wish to dial, or say, hang up, to terminate your phone helmet experience. Klondike 4253. Jeez, always with the phones. Yeah? It's me, Carl. Oh, hi, Mr. Sagan. What can I do for you? Can you get Edna on the phone for me again? You got it, Mr. Sagan. Hey, your highness! Mr. Sagan, you really have to stop calling me like this. I've got to keep all of my attention on Detective Parker. Yes, yes, of course. I've just got a couple more questions. Regarding, uh, you know what? You know what? Uh, the little matter we were whispering about yesterday. Oh, that? As a matter of fact, I'm glad you brought it up. I was thinking. Wouldn't it be a good idea to pin it all on Yakov Shmirnov? Uh, uh, pin what on him, exactly? You know, it! Oh, I get it. You're still sore about going to jail. Uh... That was the dog's fault. If he hadn't come glumping up to me right after I started the fire, I could have gotten clean away, and I never would have had to divert suspicion to you. She's the speakeasy arsonist. Carl, is somebody with you? No, it's just you and me. You know, I don't think I ever asked you why you burned down all those speakeasies. Why? Because no one else was doing anything about them. Every night they'd open up their doors serving illegal drinks and loose women, flaunting their depravity to the world, and the authorities did nothing. So I did what any right-thinking, rock-willed woman would do. I took action. Oh, and such a gorgeous action it was, too. 
The fires were so beautiful. The alcohol made them go up in such pretty blue flames. Uh, where was I? You were explaining why you burned down the speakeasies. Yes. Did you find my answer to your liking? It was very revealing. Hang up. What? Conversation terminated. Jeez, Edna was always a loon. I hope that confession's good enough for Parker. The next exhibitor on our list is Officer Danny Parker of the Hill Valley Police Force. Officer Parker is going to demonstrate a few of the many marvelous tools that our boys in blue will soon have at their disposal. The criminal element has truly met his match today. Officer Parker? Uh, it seems our next exhibitor is unavoidably detained, but I'm sure his presentation would have been both enlightening and exciting. Um, how about a round of applause just for the heck of it? I think I ever asked you why you burned down all those speakeasies. I think a lot of people are going to be interested in that answer. Well, speak of the devil. Hey, Danny. Do you mind, comrade? We're busy trying to protect the Expo from the likes of you. This'll only take a minute. Our plant recorder! It's not a good idea to steal police property, you know. Shh, listen. You know, I don't think I ever asked you why you burned down all those speakeasies. Why? Because no one else was doing anything about them. D Detective Parker! Surely you're not going to believe this crudely manufactured forgery of a recording. I'm not sure what to believe, ma'am. But based on this crudely manufactured forgery, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to come down to the station to answer a few questions about your whereabouts on the night of the speakeasy fires. Oh, very well. I... Heavens, what's that? You know, one of these days I should really stop falling for that. Hey, does this mean that the barricades can come down from Emmett's booth? Let's take that as a yes. Nice to Trixie to give me these tickets. They're supposed to get me into all the big attractions. Nah. Are you ready for a picture radio? Wonder if that's anything like MTV. The Electro Pacifier. An electric stun gun would be pretty useful, but this is just a model. Here's my ticket. I want to see inside that bathosphere. I don't think so. What do you mean? I've got a ticket. You have to honor my ticket. It's uh, uh, the, the wrong kind of ticket. Sorry. Oh, give me a break. Hey, Artie. What do you think? Quite a setup, huh? The expo? Sure. But I was wondering. This ticket should get me into any exhibit on the floor, right? Sure, that's a pee ticket. Well, the guy at the aquarium is refusing to honor it. Hmm, there must be some mistake. Come on, let's straighten this out. Professor Duteau, this young man claims you refuse to take his ticket. Not at all. I'm only too happy to take his ticket. 
Please, climb the ladder, and I will raise the bathosphere. Mon Dieu, what is the matter? The gears, uh, they must have become stuck. I am afraid I cannot raise the bathosphere at this moment. What a shame. Yes, it is, it is, it is. Well, I will work on the problem. Perhaps if you come back later. Come down, please. The bathosphere. Step back! You're crimping the hose! What does it matter if there's nobody in the bathosphere? It's very bad form. Oh, sorry. Hiya, folks. It's me, Techni, Muse of Progress, gracing you once again with my presence. And speaking of presents, what better gift could Hill Valley offer the world than this magnificent science and technology exhibit, hey folks? If you haven't done so already, I urge each and every one of you to take a peek at Furnishings of the Future, right here in our main hall. Tickets are available from me, Techni, at our information desk. It's an old nautical superstition that crimped hall speeds. Imminent doom. It does if there's somebody inside the bathosphere, but I thought you said there wasn't anybody in the bathosphere. Uh, there's... Uh, not. I demand you uncrimp that hose! Funny. You'd think it was you who was running out of air, not the guy in the bathosphere. I... I don't know... What you're talking about? It's as if you two were connected somehow. Step off the holes. Raise the bathosphere, Doc. I won't do it. Then neither will I. The logs, the gears, they have become unstuck. There, see? It was just a malfunction after all. Let's get you out of there. Huh? Emmett Brown? Then it was true. Hey, you! Hey, he just took that guy's wallet! I think he took his wallet! Oh, remind me not to become an oceanographer. I guess I must have a touch of claustrophobia. Never should have gone in there. Well, we've all got problems. Now, you'd better get back to your booth Funny before... Funny thing is, I don't even remember going in there. Last thing I recall, I was in the glass house talking to Carl Sagan. Did you know he's really a scientist? I'd heard. What did he say to you? Oh, he had some sort of spur-of-the-moment business proposition. It was all very rush-rush, I never got the details. It would have meant leaving before the expo was over, so I told him that... Say, where'd he go? Do you know? Carl Sagan? He had to leave. One of his experiments blew up on him. Oh, I know how that is. Greetings and salutations to all our honored guests. I am Techni, Muse of Progress. And it is my pleasant task once again to highlight one of the great minds who was hard at work building a better tomorrow. I think that's me. I'm next on the roster. But are you ready? No, I don't have a choice. Did you bring the static accumulator? Oh, right. Here you go. Great. Come on, let's get up there. And who knows? One of this kid's gizmos just might take off and change the life of everybody in town. Could it be the very thing he's brought to share with us today? That ought to do it. Are the block bearings all in the raised position? Block bearings, block bearings. Raised position, check. 
Then it looks like all systems are goals. Wish me luck. I don't have to. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Emmett Brown. Objection! Objection, Your Honor! I hereby demand that the scientific demonstration of Von Emmett Lettra Brown be terminated and forfeit by reason of insanity. I declare him to be in contempt of me, his father. Where is he? Hand him over this instant! Emmett, are you up there? <clears throat> you don't think you can shelter him? Emmett's gone. You just missed him. Young man, I've been sitting on the bench of Hill Valley Criminal Court for 15 years. I can smell a dissembler a mile away. Now, are you going to turn him over, or will I have to use force? Don't antagonize him. Well, if you're not going to say anything... So he is up there with you. Thanks a lot. Son, I order you to come down from there this second. I'm counting to four and f I'm three, three. Emmett. I'm not talking to him. There's no point. Maybe he'll give you a fair chance to explain yourself. He is a judge, after all. Yes, a judge who's already passed sentence. He won't listen to me. He never has. I'll be right back. I want to speak to my son. Emmett's not ready to talk to you, uh, directly. Oh, God. I suppose you're his mouthpiece? I guess so, yeah. He says it's no use talking to you. You never listen? That only shows how pig-headed he is. Of course I listen. If he can justify his craziness, I'll be only too happy to indulge it. Stay right there. I'm not going anywhere. Emmett. I'm not talking to him. There's no point. You heard him. He said he'll listen to you. Well... At least give it a shot. Father? Son? You've never understood the first thing about me. All you want to do is step on me, squelch my natural instincts. Understand. You don't know what it's like Let's to be young. You, you don't know what it's You're like to have dreams, to have ambitions so great and so powerful that they've got a life of their own. And it's all you can do to hang on for dear life while they gallop on where they must. Don't this is America, Pop. And in America, a person doesn't have to do what his father did. Isn't that why you came to America? To live where there wouldn't be so many rules? Well, we talked. Are you happy? Please, you gotta get out of Emmett's way. I have yet to hear a compelling or even coherent reason why. See, Your Honor, it's just that this demo is so important to Emmett. <laughs> A childish kerfuffle. He'll forget all about it in two weeks' time. That's what I'm afraid of. Emmett's just... Stubborn, willful, single-minded, incorrigible, and obsessed. Okay, but if you look at it from the right angle, those traits are kinda... good. That may be your angle, Sonny, but I'm not so sure it's the right one. Make no mistake, those are traits that lead to trouble. He gets them from his mother. Look, Your Honor, you don't see it, but there's an awful lot riding on Emmett's demonstration. All the more reason why I've got to put a stop to it. Look me in the eyes, young man. I expect you know my son pretty well by now. Do you seriously think his exhibition is going to be a success? Sure. Uh, sure it will. Ha! You know as well as I how it'll end. Disaster! Maybe, maybe not, but even if it does, I mean, isn't Emmett entitled to make a few mistakes? Emmett has exceeded his quota for one lifetime. It's my job as his father to see to it. There are no more mistakes. Emmett's just trying to make a name for himself. Maybe things were different when you were a kid, but nowadays you, you gotta take chances. What do you know about taking chances? 
Try moving to a strange country where you don't speak the language with only two dollars to your name. You? You bet your socks, me. And I made out all right, too. How'd your dad feel about it at the time? Papa? He was fit to be tied. He called me a disobedient little... So your father didn't approve of you coming to America? Well, Papa never really understood the younger generation. He came around a bit in the end, but by then it was too late to... Tell him I'll listen to him. I want to listen to him. If he wants to talk. Emmett, here to play peacemaker again, Pollyanna? He says you get your stubbornness from your mother. Well, that's the limit. He's not satisfied with insulting me. He's got to drag my mother through the dirt, too. Mother isn't at all like me. She's gentle and sweet and endlessly patient. If anything, I'm more like... Oh, skip it. You were starting to say that you're like... Skip it. Can it be that you and your dad? No. Next subject. Emmett, stop being a dope. You've got your pride. Okay, I, I get it. And so does he, but what's the harm in trying to make peace with the guy? He's your family, and family's important. Sometimes it's, well, even more important than we realize. May I come up? So, you think my new invention is a disaster waiting to happen? Yes, yes I do. And I'm here to say... If any son of mine is going to make of himself a public disaster, I insist on being there to support him. Pop! You're gonna change your tune once you see this baby go airborne. You see, the force field generated by the static accumulator... Marty, give Trixie the signal. We're ready for liftoff. Oh, good. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for bearing with us through that unavoidable delay. And now the Hill Valley Expo is pleased as punch to present Mr. Emmett Brown and his electrokinetic levitator. I could change her. Things could be different. Forget about it. Come on. We gotta find a way to stop her before... No, don't come any closer. Doc. Go away! But... Move! Move! Marty! Oh my god! Doc! Say something! Chromium, uh, lithium, potassium, iridium, titanium, ruthenium. I'll, I'll get help! Newspaper! What? You mean. I'm gonna get you to a hospital, Doc. You're gonna be okay. 
Yes. Oh, I think I am going to be okay, Marty. No, come on, Doc. Doc, don't do this. Don't go. Doc, come back. Marty, have you been out here the whole time? Damn it. Um, is it over already? Oh, it's over, all right. You missed a very <laughs> wild party. I'm afraid I've been banned from the expo for the next 50 years. And if I were you, I wouldn't go back in either. At least not until all the broken glass is swept up. Oh, what was I thinking? Naturally, the ionic wind generated by an electromagnet of that size is going to play havoc with a merely mechanical steering mechanism. We need a much more advanced control system. I wonder if we could find a way to translate the body's own gravitational field into electrokinetic force, one might be able to direct the ionic current simply by shifting one's weight. Oh, great Scott, that's it! So, what comes next? Work, work, and more work. A few more stumbles, followed by a breakthrough or two. The way I see it, it's those little mistakes along the way that advance us along the pathway of knowledge. Come on, there's no time to lose. Let's get back to the lab and... I'm sorry, is something wrong? No, nothing's wrong. I'm, I'm fine. You don't sound fine. Don't worry about it. It's got nothing to do with you. What? You're a complete mystery to me, Marty. Where you come from, what you're doing here... But there's one thing I do know. Whatever it is, it does have something to do with me. Uh, please, Emmett, don't ask What's any... What's this? Come on, let me see. I deserve an explanation. You wouldn't understand. Oh, yeah? Try me. What's that? An explanation. But you've got to promise me, don't look at it until you get the key to the city. Huh? Just promise. Emmett, where are you, my son? I'll be right there, Pop. Key to the city? I don't understand. And you can't understand. Not for a long time. It would do irreparable damage to something. Just, just say you promise. Okay, I promise. Wait, I will see you again, right? I guarantee it. So, you were the same Marty. Funny how memory can play tricks on a person. I remembered you being much taller. How was the ceremony? Long. You've got a theatrical way of sending messages. Only way I could do it without messing up your timeline. Very clever. But what are you doing in 1931? I 
came to rescue you. Teenage me? No, you, you. But then teenage you got mixed up in it. See, you were in jail and... Never mind, it's better I don't know. Let's just get back to 1986. That is, unless your presence has caused any other time anomalies. Me? Nah, no. Well, I'm still a little confused about my... Where is he? Where is that no good son of mine? He's not worthy of the McFly name. You see my Artie anywhere? Artie McFly? That's the one. Just got a call from Melvin at the city records office. He tells me the dad blamed fool's gun and got himself hitched to a Canadian floozy. Can you believe it? Hitched? Married. I swear, that boy's gonna put his papa in an early grave. So that's how she got her job back. Ah, he, he's married the wrong grandma. I mean, Trixie's not my grandma. And if she's not my grandma, I'm not me. Wait, that was Great Grandpa Willie. I met him when he was a baby. He peed on me. Holy crap, uh, Doc, I'm gonna disappear again. Calm down, Marty. You seem reasonably solid right now. Whatever the problem is, I'm sure we can undo it with the help of- That car! Oh, great. How the hell did she get back here? She? You? You're not Edna. What's going on here? Is this some plot to put me in the nut house? No, it's all very simple, Danny. Oh, I'm sure it is. Tell me, did I or did I not just chase Edna Strickland off in this car? Not this exact car, but a car just like it. A car with a nasty habit of disappearing into thin air? Well... Wait, Edna Strickland just disappeared in the DeLorean? If that's what you call it, it made a loud noise, and then wham! Nothing! Great Scott! Marty, do you have any notion what date she might have jumped to? None at all, Doc. See, that DeLorean's time circuits are out of whack. They could jump to any date at all. Oh, this is bad. This is very bad. Let's just hope she jumped into the future. The far future. If she's jumped into the past... You think she might mess up the time stream? Wait a minute. This is Edna. Of course she would mess up the time stream. Uh, guys, you mind telling me what the hell you're... Uh-oh. Doc? Did we just leave Hill Valley? No, I believe Hill Valley just left us. H how? Something must have happened to it. A long time ago. Well, now you two look at my lost. Hey, what on earth is that thing? Oh, uh, it's, uh, it's an experimental vehicle. Pay it no mind. Look, maybe you can help us. We're looking for Hill Valley. Well, which is it? A hill or a valley? No, it's a town. It's a town called Hill Valley. Hill Valley a town? Say, I, I think I once heard that there was a town here a long time ago. Don't know much about it, though. Just as I suspected. When did Hill Valley go away? Oh, heck, I don't know. That was all before I was born. Then whatever it was must have happened at least 45 years ago. Nobody much cares to settle around here nowadays. My dad tried to buy a farm in this area years ago, but he got run off by Scary Mary. Scary Mary? Well, that's what we all call her. Lives a couple miles from here. I make a monthly drop at her place. She's a fiend for news. Takes all the papers in the county, never throws one away. Say, if there's anybody who could tell you what happened to Hill Valley, it's her. Can you direct us to her? It's imperative that we talk to her. Sorry, fellas, but I'm pretty sure she won't talk to you. Why wouldn't she talk to us? The thing of it is, guys, Mary's older than dirt, but she's also a little touched, if you catch my drift. 
She doesn't like strangers. I'm sure we can handle her. We'll be very polite. Please, we gotta see her. Well, okay, if you insist. Take a right turn just after the bridge, then follow the wheel ruts till they come to an end. You'll have to go the last quarter mile on foot. Good luck, and don't say I didn't warn you. I got a notion I'll be kicking myself for sending you up there. Can I drive? 